always hot in my grandparents' house, and I'm not talking, I should have went short to these hot. No, it was more like, it's August in Ethiopia hot. Growing up, I remember sitting in their living room, sweating, trying to figure out my relation to these people who not only didn't seem to share my same environmental needs, but were reach an age I could barely comprehend. But my grandparents firmly believed in the three F's of life, family, faith, and food. So every Sunday, I religiously bore the heat and showed up for dinner. The very day I turned 14, my father put me on hold. In my pocket, he stuffed 200 lira and the address of a cousin who lived in a place called Hoboken, New Jersey. The only advice my father gave me, tengo familia. If you said that in English, it would be I support a family. But in Italian, it means more, much more. I am a man. I am doing well for my woman and my children. I have a reason for being alive. Tengo familia. I arrived to learn that my cousin had left Hoboken from a faraway land called Brooklyn. So for six weeks, I lived underneath a pier off the Hudson River, spending every minute of every day trying to figure out a way to earn enough money to get back home. I was the middle sister of seven girls. Frank was the first man. No, the first person to ever notice me. He was making a daughter and dad the carpenter's apprentice. And I thought that was a fortune. And he promised me if I married him, he'd become a fine carpenter. And he built for me, me, a wonderful home. And he did. He built for me this beautiful home. My grandmother Anna never made it through grammar school, never even learned how to drive a car. The locker in the kitchen was a tomato, pasta dough, and some garlic, and the woman was Einstein. <laughs> On my 29th birthday, my parents had moved to Florida, and my sister, Melissa, to San Diego. Before she left, Melissa told me that the best thing about being an American is you could stay in the country and still live 2,000 miles away from your family. <laughs> I stayed near my grandparents. Every Sunday, I rode a bus in through the city, but one Thursday, something happened, something important, and what I had to tell them couldn't wait. Hey, Gramps. Hi, Nan. Nick, your grandmother's gonna ask you to do something for her. Refuse. Oh, Nick, you have to do something for me. <laughs> you hungry? Uh, no, Nan. Like I said, the phone is just have to make this announcement. There's no time to do any favors, Ada. What did you have to eat? Chinese food. Chinese? Nan. You're telling me that's food? Well, we're eating it, Cindy. Think so? Yes. <laughs> Thirty years ago, I had dinner at a Chinese yeah. restaurant. To this day, I don't know what I ate. I'll make you food. <laughs> Man, I'm full. I'll make you a sandwich. Man, you look hungry. How? Tell me exactly how I look hungry. Breaking my heart, Nicholas. <laughs> all right, all right. A small sandwich. What do you want on it? I don't care. Pro how about provolone and ham? Perfect. All right, I'll make you a provolone and ham sandwich. You tell your grandfather he can't drive your horse. What? Don't listen to my name. <laughs> well, two days ago at the Grand Union parts lot, he needs to put the car in reverse. I thought it was reverse. I put it in second. Right into a Japanese car. Thank God no one was killed. I barely dented the fender. <laughs> Two weeks ago, at 7-Eleven, he needs to step on the brake pedal and step on the gas pedal. We go very fast for about two feet. Thank God no one was killed. We <laughs> <laughs> talked about this. You shouldn't be driving anymore. You? You're telling me what to do? I used to change your diapers. You told me. I appreciate it. He never changed your diapers. Man, why don't you make the sandwich? I'll talk to him. No, oh, could you turn the air conditioning on? It's sweltering in here. That's crazy. It's only June. But it's hot. The air conditioner doesn't go on until the 4th of July. All right, I'll listen to you. You listen to your grandson. Look, Gramps, you know something terrible could happen. I have to drive your grandmother to the store. She can walk, take the bus. I only go close by, that's all. And you still get in an accident. So what are you saying? I'm too old to drive? Your reflexes are just getting a little slow. I'm out of trouble, I'm a cheddar monster. Whatever, man. <laughs> I'm making the way you like it. How can you make it the way I like it when I don't even want it? Don't talk fresh. Cheddar monster. <laughs> cheddar. You sure? Absolutely, 100%. I want cheddar, Nan. But I have such nice monster. This is the woman you're listening to, so I can't drive. All right, Nan. Monster. I want monster. I thought so. <laughs> I just don't want to get a call saying hurt yourself or Nan or somebody else. My first car, 1941 DeSoto, cost $53 more than I could possibly spend. But when I first laid eyes on it, chrome wheels, black leather inside, dashboard that was the most beautiful sight I ever saw, bellissima. I worked three months tonight shoveling coal into some restaurant party <coughs> so I could get that 53 And when I finally got my hands on it, when I sat behind that dashboard, held the perfect new steering wheel in my hand, that's when I knew I could make a life for my family. If I could own this car, I could make a life. Tango Familia. Thank you. I got another set hidden in my tools. Just promise me you'll only drive
drive in there and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I was the first in my family to get a good job with the union in a Ford's automobile factory. And the way I did it, you see, was I told him I was Irish. Because I had to. Because back in those days, the most famous Italians in America were the Pope and Sacco and Vanzetti. And did they look at us and think Pope? No, Sacco and Vanzetti. <laughs> My father's folks, Nancy and Emma, lived two doors down, and every Sunday they'd also visit and share dinner. Two children of hard-working but destitute immigrants, and they married at 17 and had two kids, my dad and his brother Nick, who was killed in Korea. The day I married Nancy, my mother t sat me down and told me something amazing. She said, Emma, just because you're his wife, it doesn't mean you're not as important as him. Speak up. Say how you feel. Don't become one of those women who gets lost behind their families. So I told Ford's my name was Ian Sean O'Malley O'Brien O'Sullivan, and they gave me the job. <laughs> so while nuns went to work, I made us a beautiful life at home. For 27 years, I stood on an assembly line and put this nut in that bolt to give my wife and my son the life they deserve. We struggled and made our way because we are family. Tango Familia. Tango Familia. Tango Familia. They were the loudest people I ever met. <laughs> Hi, you Nikki. You who? Hey, Gramps. Hey, Nan. What a pleasure to see you on Thursday. Oh, I'm glad you came. I still didn't tell you. Wait, first I want to take a picture. Of what? Of you. Why? Well, because I got two pictures left on this roll since last season. <laughs> they might be great. Come on, Ramsey. I've got this announcement. It's just one picture. Ramps. One picture. Fix <laughs> your hair nice, bro. Man, stop. But you don't look happy. <laughs> picture, Gramps. Make me a copy, guys. I'll pay you for it. All right, I got one more. All right, enough of the pictures. Nan, would you get back in here, please? Oh, and Nikki, that present that you bought for us, the one we don't know how to use. The answering machine? <laughs> the <laughs> other one, the CPU. VCR. Right, we need the receipt. It broke? No, we just hate it. We do not <laughs> hate it. It's just too expensive. We can't enjoy it. Why are you bored at the expense? I bought it for you. Just give us the receipt, and we'll give you back the money. I don't want the money. It's too much to spend on us for a BCP. It's your 60th anniversary present. <laughs> Fine, we'll keep $10. Look, we'll talk about this later. I've got something much more important to talk about. Where's Ada? We'll talk more about the driving and I'll eat the sandwich. Now, if you're all sitting and listening to me, please, I'd like to say what I have to say now. He's getting married! How can he get married? He doesn't even have a girlfriend. I'm not getting married. Why not? <laughs> we say this out loud. Nowadays, but we always have it. What about Donna? No, we'll not discuss Donna. The subject is closed. We broke up with her two years ago. I thought you broke up with her. Me, Daddy. Sorry. Did she break up with you? Come <laughs> on, please. Oh, oh, she had such nice hair. Oh, Nikki, I was so sure you were going to get engaged. Every time I went to a party, I'd take all the extra plastic knives and forks and save them for your wedding shower. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. No, man, it's what the answering machine did. No, Nick, that machine broke. How'd it break? I just got it for you. I threw it out. Every time we pressed a button, someone was yelling at us. That was people leaving messages. <laughs> oh, Nikki, I want to see you married before I'm dead. Let me know when you're going. I'll see if we can dig up. Now. Nicholas, your parents! <laughs> Nicholas ate Chinese food tonight. <laughs> Nick, why your parents moved to Florida? God only knows. They spend the first 56 years of their lives nice and close to their parents. Who raised them? Then boom, your father gets a little sinus condition and then retire early and move to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> to live with a bunch of old people who love humidity. Frank, come say hello. <laughs> you're a good boy, Nick. You staying near your family? Long distance, Paul's fast. <laughs> Hi, your son said I can't drive no more. Come visit soon, we'll send my car and pretend it's moving. <laughs> <coughs> then your sister gets married and moves to San Diego. Who the hell moves to San Diego? Hey, Grant, please. Oh, your parents want you to call to them after you tell us the news. They want to know if you take it well. Well, we'll open that out in a moment. You're going to sit and listen to me now. Or aren't you going to sit? Uh, no, I want to do the standing up. It's like he's gonna make a speech. If he wants to make a speech, let him make a speech. It's not a speech. Can I just please say this now? Before you start, who's hungry? Man, this is a one sentence announcement. You don't have to cater it. I got a new crumb cake. With the big crumbs? It's the AMP. I mean, I just want a sliver, but a healthy sliver. I want a really big piece. Don't announce it again. Man. Oh, hey, Nikki, before I forget, I got you a mask card. The 1030 mask at St. Anne's will be set for you. Why? And hopefully, a girl to marry. The priest 
agree to this? Hey, go to the mass. Maybe you'll need it. <laughs> Whatever you do, if you go, don't talk to Father Vincenzo. No, it's Father Vincenzo again. Hey, him and I had a big falling out 15 years ago. About what? I don't know. I just remember I was right. <laughs> hey, here we are. <laughs> Thank God. Like, please save us now. Wait, I feel a draft. Me too. Let's open. It's 110 degrees in here. More room. We're chilling. Oh, my Lord. I forgot all about that. <laughs>
takes a job. When he says goodbye, well, that'll probably be the last time we we'll see each other. No one knows yet, not even my Emma. I'll tell her soon, but I should tell him first. Maybe then he'd say. Most companies have this unwritten rule. If you say no to a promotion, another one might not come along. That day, a manager sat me down and told me, this means we're putting great faith in you. We have greater expectations for you. The next Sunday, I returned for our weekly dinner, at which I expected my grandparents to lay the guilt on something fierce. But they didn't. They hated something much worse. Hello? Hi, you Nick. Uh, since when do you play the mandolin? When I was a little boy, my father taught me. My grandmother found us at a garage sale the other day, and last night I took a lesson there what happened at the high school. The high school? How'd you get there? You didn't drive, did you? I walked. 45 minutes, in the dark, there and back. If I drop dead, I'll have specific instructions to deliver me to your doorstep. Hi, <laughs> Nick. Hey, Chris, what's with the jackets and ties? What, can't we get dressed up to see our grandson? Uh, anyway, the promotion. I'm sure he has a time to mull it over, huh? Nicky. Good morning, Nick. Hi, Nan. You want some nuts? Uh, uh, no thanks, but how are you feeling? Well, we're good, Nick. Have some nuts. Uh, no, I mean, I mean about the promotion. <laughs> oh, well, they're proud. Proud? Nicholas, we'll be eating soon. Why don't you do something a little nice with your hair? Nan, about my promotion. Oh, I'm very proud. You hello, Nikki! What, Nan? How did your hair look today? Oh, I combed it into an afro, Nan. What's going on with you people? Last time I was here. Who was this you people? We're not people, we're your family. Something's going on. The last time I was here, I told you about my promotion, and it seemed like it was the end of the world. I'll get it! Why, who could that be? <laughs> Why, it's Caitlin O'Hare, the unmarried niece of my master partner, Margaret O'Hare! <laughs> Relaxing. 
Okay, change the subject. <laughs> so, Robert, tell me, do you drive? Ranch. Uh, <laughs> Funny you should ask. Oh, he's he's at the stop. He's getting an accident. I've killed hundreds of people. <laughs>
yes, he had found his reason to stay.
the hospital, and I didn't hit anybody or anything. And this was under great strain and stress because I thought my grandson was having a heart attack. Turns out he did have an attack, a panic attack, they called it. The doctor suggested he rest in bed for a few days and get rid of everything in his life that was making him upset. So naturally, we thought he should stay with us. <laughs> Ah, uh, that actor. Uh, uh, right, the one with the ears. 
Right. I would like to. That's right, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, that's what it says on the card, the one with the ears? No, but I know who they mean. Well, they have to tell you who they mean. It's the game. That's the whole point. That's why it's fun. Thank you. Oh, oh, no. Come down. <laughs> Don't have another panic attack. Okay, okay. Well, think of who the guy with the ears is, okay? Okay, nice and calmly. Who the hell is the guy with the ears? Do you think you have ears? Uh, uh, he dated Lana Turner. Right, Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart didn't date Lana Turner. No. No, Jimmy Stewart was married to the woman with the hair. No, didn't that wacky guy with the nose marry the woman with the hair? No, uh, Jimmy Stewart was married to the woman with the hair with the face. No, didn't the woman with the face marry the guy with the face? No, that was the guy with the feet. Then who dated Lana Turner? Uh, that gangster she killed, uh, somebody somewhere. No, her daughter killed the gangster with the butcher knife. Right, the daughter with the butcher knife. Right, that's all. Right. What was the question again? <laughs> oh, I remember. I knew. Uh, right, that actor, uh, uh, Gone with the Wind. Clark Gable. Clark Gable. Very good, Clark Gable. Happy? No, Clark Gable was not in High News. Get out of here, he was. Did you read the back of the card? <laughs> Gary Cooper. No! <laughs> Clark Gable, Lana Turner. Go again. <laughs> Good 
you don't even need food. There's no such <laughs> thing. What story are you talking about? The story of all I won you. They don't want to hear that old thing. Oh, no, tell it. They've heard it. But he changes it every time. Tell us, Luke. Vicky, you want to hear that? As long as it won't get me too excited. All right. <laughs> So when I first met your grandmother, she was living in this fourth floor walk up not far from here. And every night I would climb over her fence, sneak into her backyard, and serenade her. This is not true. Well, you just let me tell my story. Story is great. I never met him. His father dragged him to my house. My father talked to him. His father talked to me. And then both fathers said we were getting married. And I've been 60 years old. Can't I just tell it the way I like it? <laughs> All right, so when I first saw your grandmother, she was standing on a street corner. Uh, and it was a beautiful day, beautiful sunshine, and she was waiting for a bus. Uh, and and I, I remember she was smiling and there was something about her. I mean, I had never seen anything so amazing in my life. She was so beautiful you could drink her from a glass. I was wrong. Every word of this is true. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I was still too nervous to talk to her, so I just watched her get on the bus, but then I waited there all day till another bus returned to that very spot and when she strolled on home, I followed her. And I would, when I snuck into her backyard, I would stand right underneath the window and I would sing to her. I did this every night for a month, every night for a month. And I'd sing her this one song. Yes, sir, that's my baby. Wait, let me get my mandolin. <laughs> no, sir, don't mean maybe. Yes, sir, that's my baby now. Yes, ma'am, it's decided. No, no ma'am, we won't hide it. Yes, ma'am, it's decided now. By the way. Every time I watch an old, old black and white movie, I can't help but think that that's what things were like in my grandparents' days. That they lived these very, rather, to like joyless lives. But sometimes I'd see them when they were young, and I'd get a glimpse of them in their past, and their past would be splashed with color. I'd see them when they were young and their whole lives were ahead of them. Yes, sir, that's my baby. No, sir, I need a baby. Yes, sir, that's my baby now. Yes, sir, that's my baby now. Who's hungry? Emma, how about you and me going home now? Nikki, are you okay with us leaving a little bit early? No, go. This is the reason why I want you to marry Nikki. This is the reason. Ada, Frank, see you tomorrow. Oh, I should be cleaning up now. <laughs> <laughs>
It was during the holidays, and on Christmas morning, there were the vendors again, like they never left. I took your mother in my arms, and I carried her to the first car, and every toy she pointed at, I bought for her. And when we came back in with this, this rainbow of toys, my mother said to me, this is what your father always wanted, but we barely had enough to buy food on Christmas. That's why he had to send you away, so you could make for yourself a life he could never give you. I always thought my father was a bastard who wouldn't give me anything, and it turns out, he was giving me all he had. You're going away, aren't you, Nicholas? It's a moment when I wake up each morning and I don't remember I'm sick. It lasts only a few seconds, but it's like a little present I get at the start of each day. That night, I told my aunt. The first time I cried about it was when she began to cry. But I made her promise not to tell anyone. That's for me to do. It would be so selfish of me to tell them, so selfish, but when you get to be my age, you realize what matters is family. What matters is family, and what's in Seattle? Just some job. <laughs> if that's not worth it's golden. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
55 years. Close your eyes and imagine that. 55 years. That's one thing he doesn't understand by trying to plan out his life so much and staying away from marriage. He's missing that. He'll never know what it's like, how love can deepen to places you've never even imagined. 55 years. Here we are. <coughs>
what you said. What I had to tell you, Nikki, was that I will always be with you. So you be good. No, no, but you we have to tell him he has to go. No, but I know, I know all that. He has to go. Nikki, man, dinner came beautiful, Mangia. Man, is there something wrong? Nikki, I really thought you had a chance with Caitlin. I really did. With all the hassles and moving jobs in cities brain, that last Sunday seemed to arrive so quickly. Nikki, I hope you noticed in yawning your grandfather put on the air conditioner today. Yeah, I thought he agreed. Was a beautiful meal, wasn't it, Nikki? We made all your favorites. Gnocchi, the au parmesan, tiramisu, biscotti. You're not going to get a meal like that in Seattle, Nikki. I know it, man. Man, I'm so sorry, man. For what? For leaving. I don't know. Oh, Nikki, honey. No, you're not sorry. No, man, I am. I am. No, no, no. Maybe you feel bad for us because you love us, but you're not sorry. And I think that's great. You have this whole wonderful ahead of you in Seattle. Why waste time being sorry? If I was sorry for every sad thing that happened in my life, I would not be able to get out of bed anymore. You see, Nikki, one thing I know for sure is you can't keep the people you love most around forever. You can pray and you can scream and you can cry, but you can't keep them around forever. Funny, you know, I never really thought you looked like your Uncle Nikki much. Sure, you were named after him, but I never really saw him anymore. Now I look at you and you look exactly like him. Just try to be happy, Nikki, okay? You have nothing to be sorry for. Oh, so did your grandfather tell you, Nicholas? What? He sell you the car. No, he didn't mention it. He tried driving to the mandolin left the other night. It didn't hit the back fence. Get out. Clean up the garage. That's right. He didn't even make it to the street. Thank God no one was killed. <laughs> Before I forget, I got you another mask card. <laughs> I wouldn't let town with that one, man. Oh, cramps. Oh, man, just told me you're selling the car. I'm bored with driving. Oh, that's terrific, <laughs> cramps. I would have been so worried. Don't. Don't you ever worry about me, Nick. Well, the taxi should be here any minute. Well, the Nicholas would have flamed you if I made you a <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
from which I knew from the beginning was pretty special. Two months later, I flew back to my grandparents to attend the funeral of my grandfather, Lindsay O, who had died from prostate cancer and spread to his liver and kidneys. My grandmother told me that he had known about it before I left, but they thought it wasn't right to burden me with it. Burden me? How could they not have said anything, anything at all? If any one of them did, no question, I would have stayed. Achieved what my grandparents consider the greatest accomplishment known to man. I married Tango Familia. And now, when Teresa and I await at home for the birth of our first child, my mind often wanders back to those final few moments spent with my grandparents. And I wish I could neatly sum up who they were and what they meant to me and how they fit into the puzzle of my life. But what is most clear to me is that my grandparents worked every day of their lives to ensure that their children would be more educated and successful than they. But what they didn't foresee was that they would elevate me to a new life so far removed from their own that they would never quite comprehend who I had become or how I would continue their legacy. And when I look back at them, I too saw only a vague reflection of myself. Uh, but still, they got me to laugh. They let me go. And to this day, Sundays are for family dinner. Everything came beautiful, did it, Nicholas?
to. Where do we go to bother him? Probably up in the booth or backstage. Safe bet. Yeah, she hides.